Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here. Today is Christmas. I just had a nice juicy Christmas dinner with my family on Christmas Eve and I received some nice great gifts including this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now which is uh, the Snoopy Dog House that's decorated with Christmas lights and it's all in red too so it really fits the Christmas spirit. So I'm going to be reviewing my last Christmas movie that I picked up and I just watched so that way I can move on with other things and that is Elf yes Elf with Will Ferrell playing Buddy the Elf a six foot and several inches tall um, human who's being raised and adopted by uh, Santa Claus's elves including Papa Elf only to discover that his true father is somewhere in New York City so that way he'll be able to find him, get to know him, and be able to spend all the holiday Christmas cheer with all the locals around. Yeah. Um, it's a whimsical, quirky, um, heartwarming, and hilarious comedy that you'll never forget. And I and I was pleasant surprised how popular it turned out to be when I first saw this movie in theaters with my family, and I really enjoyed it. And this is a very nice. Um, DVD set that I picked this up recently at Goodwill. I actually got this um, a couple months ago. Surprisingly in mint condition. That comes with a slip cover that's very shiny. Yeah, you can definitely see Will Ferrell completely tall and it just says Elf on there. And you can look at the back. You can see the entire cast right there. Not only Will Ferrell, but you have James Caan. You have Zoe Deschanel, um, Ed Asner, and Bob Newhart. Yeah. And yes, it even has a um, an advertisement to look straight into the decoder card where it tells you uh, you can win some prizes. Yeah, but seeing that this was a long time ago, back in 2004 when it was released, um, it's already been expired. So, But when you open it up um, through the slipcover, um, yeah, you get all the uh, highlights included, so it has all the special features, you can access to all of them, and it's a two-disc set, so it contains both widescreen and full-screen editions, plus fun games and, and other stuff. And it's actually part of the Infinity film from New Line Home Entertainment, yes, because uh, back in the 2000s, uh, they actually came up with a specialty of select New Line titles where you can actually watch a film but you can access to all the special features which includes behind the scenes featurettes, um, deleted and alternate scenes, trivia facts and other information that you want to get to know of. So, so it makes it even better. Plus it has those animated menus included. So, so yes um, and it's also claimed to be um, one of the the two uh, films that was that was released by Infinity Film that were rated PG. So yes, and Elf is one of them, <laughs> of course. And I'm going to open it up. Yeah, you can see um, the widescreen edition. Yeah, you see Buddy the Elf right there, and you see another one, <laughs> which is full screen, but it has more features on on both. Yeah, this is the Dakota card right there. It's no longer used. Um, yeah, just what you need. An advertisement for Kangaroo Jack, Good Day USA. Yeah, it's a animated uh, feature. And then it comes with some of the mask. Ugh, garbage. But it does have um, the DVD guide. Uh, and I'm trying to have a hard time getting this out. So, this is what it looks like, just like the cover art. And on the back, it's to select the scene, yeah, select scene selections. And when you open it up, this is what you'll find. Yeah. Okay. So, that's pretty much what you get uh, for this, to this um, set. And of course, it's it's on Blu-ray. That was released by Warner Home Video, so all the features are ported. Um, 
I'm not so sure if they ported the DVD-ROM features, because, you know, more often or not, they always take that off from Blu-rays. And you won't get the actual menus that you can explore, so that's the main reason to keep your DVDs. So you never know what you're going to have. Yeah, and, and sometimes they don't port um, other stuff either, so... But I'm pretty certain that you get what you need for that release. Plus, you get a high-definition transfer that makes it look better. Okay, so let's get to the review. It stars Will Ferrell, James Caan, Zoe Deschanel, Mary, Liz Mary Steenburgen, Daniel Tay, Bob Newhart, Ed Asner, Frazon Love, Peter Dinklage, Amy Sedaris, uh, Michael Lerner, Annie Richter, Kyle Gass, Artie Lane, with Peter Billingsley, Matt Walsh, also featuring the voices of Leon Redbone, you know, legendary singer, he's no longer with us, uh, Ray Harry Halsen, Dallas McKinnon, Maurice Lamarchi, in an uncredited role, and John Farreau, who happens to be the director of the film, which is written by David uh, Birnbaum. The movie began set on Christmas Eve in 1973. We suddenly spot a baby boy at an orphanage that wants up crawling inside Santa Claus's sack. And Santa Claus, of course, is played by Ed Asner. As he was being captivated by the sight of a teddy bear that all of a sudden he was being transported back to the North Pole where at the workshop all the elves and even Santa had been discovered that yes he was actually inside completely once he got out and that's when they named him Buddy directly from the brand label on his diaper so then Papa Elf played by Bob Newhart adapts and raises him all of his life as he started to grow even taller and more uh, sophisticated and, and well, very special. Because throughout the years, I mean, seeing that he's taller than the rest of the elves, and, well, the difference here was that he does have trouble building some toys. I mean, he's not exactly like what the elves had to offer because he felt like he didn't know what he was doing. Although he is smart at times, and and he, he basically figure out what, it, what he can do, but then next thing you know, he feels like you know he's being left out of it, like he's an outcast. Um. So at times he felt like you know he believes that he's an elf, but then in reality he's actually human. So. So then Papa Elf explains that Buddy was born to a man who happens to be his biological father, Walter Hobbs, who's played by James Kong, who actually had a wife named Susan Wells, which apparently we learned that they give him up for adoption. But then Susan subsequently died, and Walter, who now works for a children's book publisher at the Empire State Building in, in New York City, but unfortunately, he's unaware of Buddy's existence. So, and to make matters worse, he's on the naughty list. So now um, it was up to him to go on the journey all the way to New York City, so he'll be able to find him and get to know him better. But that wasn't working out as as it turned out to be, because unfortunately he got kicked out. And then next thing you know, he wants up at a department store called Gimbal's. And that's where, you know, he's beginning to, to explore the entire department store on other things. And then that's when he meets uh, his love interest, uh, who's a worker at Gim. He was a very unenthusiastic worker at the store. Uh, Joby, who was played by Zoe Deschanel. We did actually learn that since Santa was coming around, 
he was going to get ready to decorate the entire North Pole because it wasn't exactly how it was presented. Yeah, it just looks like an, just a typical, normal toy store, as it seems. So what he does was that he decorates by, you know, taking out all the pillows, you know, started cut, doing all these uh, cutouts, you know, of, of snowflakes, all decorated it together. He's up all these light brights uh, to, to put in the name and all this other stuff that he has to do. It even builds uh, an Empire State Building out of Legos uh, among other uh, New York skyscrapers and skylines to make it more special. Um, he also learns that Joey can actually sing uh, completely. <laughs> Um, just when the, he spotted uh, her at the locker room, yeah, the woman's locker room, and singing the baby is cold outside. Yeah, very awkwardly too when when he actually discovered. <laughs> okay. Of course, um, the manager was played named. Um, so of course, the manager named Wanda. Yes, Wanda. Has a boy's name, uh, who's the manager of Gimbals, uh, played by Fazon Love. I mean, apparently uh, he was the one who wanted to hire him to um, be part of this um, because he thought he was an employee. Um, so, yeah, the so of course, uh, the North Pole, which is Santa Land, um, everything was going. Particularly right. I mean, once uh, Santa arrives, but it turned out to be an indoor Santa. Um, of course, was played by um, um, Artie Langs. Yeah, the Santa for for Gimbals. Yes, um, he referred to him as a fake because he he really discovered because he had definitely had been in the North Pole for so long, so he knows what Santa looks like. S yeah, scares off the kids, and then suddenly got into a bigger fight which causes uh, Buddy to get arrested. Um, so at this rate uh, Walter reluctantly bails him out and takes him to the doctor yeah, named uh, uh, Dr. Ben Leonardo. It was the family's uh, pediatrician who's played by John Furrow by the way. Yeah, he makes an appearance. Um, he um, basically um, tests out his DNA and it actually confirms that Buddy happens to be his long lost son that he never thought he would have. So he convinced Walter to take Buddy home to meet his stepmother, Emily, who's played by Mary Steenburgen, uh, joining in with his 12 year old son, who happens to be his half brother. Michael, who's played by Daniel Tay. So, of course, believing once that he's faced with reality, he, he was trying to be forced to drop the elf thing. I mean, he goes around, you know, cooking some spaghetti with with an added touch of, of maple syrup just to taste better and more, you know, sugary. Because that's what he loves to do. He always loves to put some sugary stuff, like, for example, you know, Pop tarts and <laughs> all this chocolate candies and, and stuff to and with chocolate syrup and everything to mix in, you know, with the spaghetti, even though it does fill with sauce. Um, yes, yeah, he was actually doing that for um, for Emily, um, you know, for breakfast, and then he'll be able to cook some for lunch too, <laughs> for for everyone. Um, of course, uh, he even started to build something out of wood, which was directly from the shelf of, of a TV <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, of course, on for but of course, um, by desperation on Christmas Eve, uh, Walter's boss, uh, Fulton Greenway, who's played by Michael Lerner, had laid down a hard deadline for him to um, actually come up with a new idea for the best-selling children's um, book um, that's going to be uh, put 
put together, you know, with storyboards and all, all of which are written by Miles Finch, who's played by Peter Dinklage, um, which the meeting, however, turned out to be quite of a disaster. Um, when Buddy suddenly interrupts uh, the meeting and calls him an elf, and that's when he got completely angry. And then next thing you know, um, you know he gets uh, thrown out, um, and Walter tells him that I never want to see you anymore. Yeah. Of course, before all this other stuff did happen, I, I know I forgot, I keep going right in the middle of it. I, I know um, Buddy actually uh, was trying to cheer um, um, Michael up. Uh, he started following him around until a bunch of kids started throwing all these uh, snowballs. And yes, I mean, they're like throwing snowballs pretty fast. And that's when... Uh, Buddy had uh, started creating all these snowballs, so they'll end up throwing it back at them. So it was like a war that was going on. <laughs> yeah, that was very funny. Uh, and then there's like nice moments too, where where Buddy actually gets to um, spend a date with uh, Joey to certain places around. You know, it's, you know, exploring around in New York and just having fun. That sort of thing. Okay. Um, so yes, um, back to where, where, where I am, um, yes, uh, Walter did kick Buddy out, told him he doesn't want to see him again, and that's when he, he ran away, until suddenly he spotted um, Santa Claus, who, who just arrived, but unfortunately um, he was running out of gas, um, so he ended up stopping straight at uh, Central Park, yeah, the engine suddenly came out, so it needed to be fixed. So he crashes uh, directly to the Central Park, and then um, already, um, you know, Walter decided to leave um, just when he was about to do his presentation. So brought in with his son uh, Michael to join, but you know, he told the boss to uh, up yours. So got fired. Yeah, he just ran. He just quit. You know, ran out. And decided he'll he'll just find a buddy that's that somewhere around Central Park that he'll find, but then of course they end up finding Santa. Um, that was trying to find a way to uh, put the engine back in place, you know, fix everything so that way they'll be on their way. Um, only to be chased down by uh, the Central Park Rangers. Because, uh, yes, we've learned that Santa actually put them on their naughty list. Um, also, Michael had took the Santa's list. Um, so that way they could prove that Santa is real. Yeah, because there was a news report going around uh, from New York. And not to mention, uh, as a distraction, I mean, Walter had to dress up uh, wearing the Santa suit. So that way they won't go after Santa. Um, so at this rate, um, Buddy had came to repair the engine, putting it back into the sleigh, so that way they'll be on their way. But unfortunately, to make it work, you know, everyone has to believe in Santa, so that way it'll be the spirit to actually keep on going. So they, <laughs> of course, Michael had to read all the list of a presence that everyone around, you know, children and yes, even adults, to see what they want on their list, and then so for that spirit alone, you know, it'll cause the blade to actually run as fast as it can. So that way they'll get to deliver all the presents. So, so uh, by next Christmas, uh, Walter now has his own publishing company with the best-selling book about Buddy's adventures. Yep, eventually became, as we expected, Elf. So now um, Buddy and Joey are now married together, and they're bringing in their newborn daughter to Susie to visit Papa Elf in the North Pole. And then they get to spend time with their family, you know. So now everything's going... You know, holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> um, I gotta say, Will Ferrell actually did an amazing job uh, with his performance. I mean, considering the fact that he's done 
you know, Saturday Night Live at the time, during his post seasons and stuff. And I know he's been doing several movies that I know of, and I always love Will Ferrell. You know, he's a funny comedian. I, I always love his movies, uh, even though, yes, there are films that are pretty bad that he's done, but that's okay. Um, I always thought he was uh, very talented, and the way he portrayed the role of Buddy really made it up for it, and I love it. And he's definitely the perfect fit. Um, I love the cast joining in. I mean, it's great to see legendary actor Ed Asner um, playing Santa Claus. And the way he plays him is exactly what I pictured it. So it's almost like Luke Rantz, uh, you know, becoming more holly jolly. Um, and of course, um, Bob Newhart, you know, giving some dry humor that he was famous for. And, and he was actually very nice and caring, too. Only to, to find out about the sequel that's going around. Plus, he's also the narrator of the film. You know, he tells the story about how it all began and how it left off at the end, too. Um, and the rest of the cast, too, like um, Zoe de Chanel, I mean, definitely a perfect love interest for Buddy. And, and she, yes, she can definitely sing. I mean, especially in the scene where she got to sing uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which is not in the original script. But it's amazing that it was it had a nice fit to it because it is a Christmas movie, so why not? And it proves. Um, yeah, I mean, for that exterior. Um, Mary Steenburgen was also wonderful. And Daniel Tay, uh, surprisingly for a child actor, he was he was good. Um yeah, and plus you got Amy Sedarius, you know, playing the secretary for Walter Hobbs, which is Deb, who often just uh, comes into his office instead of using the intercom. <laughs> but he's also very nice to uh, Buddy when when they first met. Um, and um, of course you got other actors like Andy Richter and Kyle Gass. Yeah, of course. Um, I know Kyle Gass, you know, is part of uh, Tendacious D with Jack Black, but he's been in other comedies. And Andy Richter, of course, you know, he's always been the the assistant of Conan O'Brien. So. Um, and uh, Peter Dinklage, I mean, long before Games of Thrones, I mean, he's always been playing um, different roles of his career, you know, considering he's a little man. But a very talented one. Very talented actor. Done a lot of great. Um, uh, there's even um, Peter Bimsley. Uh, I mean, more often though, he's been in all of uh, John Farrow's films. Uh, but most entirely, you know, he's been best known for playing Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Um, but it was nice to see him in a small role as Ming Ming. <laughs> um, okay. And um, it has a lot of great special effects that they put into it. I mean, the the visual effects were actually done by Rimmen and Who's, uh, the same people that gave us uh, Ghostbusters that worked on it. Yeah, they worked on Ghostbusters, but they also had done several movies, too. So they use the CGI effects, and they actually use a lot of practical effects, uh, um, even with the sets being built and designed, you know, trying to give it a black and white ex interior inside of, of these uh, Santa's workshops and other houses around. You know, even though it was all colorful on the exterior, and it has a lot of snow. Um, Blazing Snow that's trying to resemble uh, the Wreck and Bass Christmas specials. Like, for example, I mean, you got all these stop motion animated uh, creatures, you know, such as uh, the Puffin, along with the Walrus, the Bear, and even the <laughs> um, Mr. Narwhal, which is a, a whale, but with a unicorn um, horn that's on on his forehead so yeah um, and by the even the snowman which is basically um, 
a take on the Burl Ives the snowman in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and so he's known as Leon the snowman that's uh, voiced by Leon Redbone God rest his soul, I mean he's a legendary uh, songwriter and singer too in fact he was the one who sang the, the Mr. Belvedere theme song as you may know um, he also had a song for this movie as well, which is a cover version of Baby is Cold Outside, uh, joining in with Zoe de Chanel. So it really works. Um, I, I know there's been several versions of that song, and especially the one with Idina Menzel and Michael Babel. So it's like every version you have to hear is, is that. Um, yeah, before people wanted to ban that song in recent years. Screw these people. Which, by the way, the stop motion puppetry that was created was actually done by, you're going to love this, the Chicago Brothers. Um, the same guys who worked on the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Unbelievable. <laughs> but they've been working on the stop motion for a long time. Especially with their short films that they follow. So it's great that they got a great team to join in with all the practical effects and other stuff in the mix. Um, uh, anyway, um, I know that the original script was supposed to be a lot darker, but seeing that they want to make it a uh, family friendly PG rated um, material for for Faro, I mean he wanted to come up with a movie that would be a classic, so that's why they had to do some subtle changes. And and I guess originally they were going to get Terry's uh, so wig off to direct this, but he went on to do another Christmas comedy that became an R-rated comedy of them all, um, Bad Santa, which came out the same year as Elf. <laughs> so, what do you know? Because, um, yes, this, the script was originally going to be written for Jim Carrey to play the role of Buddy the Elf, because, of course, Jim Carrey was the biggest star of the 90s, um, but by the 2000s, of course, uh, Will Ferrell would be the biggest star. <laughs> and he was the right choice. Um, so I can see why. And and I also love the other special effects that they put into it, um, you know, with the Santa sleigh, you know, you saw all the reindeers, and, and how it moves around. They use a a blue screen effect um, to create uh, this particular shot and they did everything here and it has a lot of great funny moments too you know where you know buddy's just going around New York you know finding how <laughs> how fish out of water this place turned out to be like the way he's just going around not exactly as normal as as most people are he's just swinging around the doors of the Empire State Building and all this other, doing all this crazy stuff, even eating all these cotton balls when he was at the doctor. Um, and um, all this other stuff that he's been doing. And so, I mean, he's very, um, you know, perky and quirky and stuff, if I can come up with words to describe, but that's, that's how it goes. <laughs> Um, anyway, but uh, it, it's it's a fun movie, and and I can see why it became so popular. I mean, it it had a musical um, that w that came out in 2010, and it also had a stop motion animated television special, Elf Buddy's uh, Musical Christmas, uh, that um, aired on NBC, and that was very special. So, of course, with all the Christmas movies that we've been getting to, uh, over the years, uh, decades after decades, you never know which one will top the most. But, but either way, um, Elf is just a special film. It's hilarious, fun, joy, heartwarming, and I know you're going to love it. So. so anyway, that's Elf, and I give the movie... Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Merry Christmas to one and all. 
and have a happy new year that follows, which is 2020. And I'll see you later.